The RSPCA showed up at my house. They basically threatened to arrest me. And then PETA made a public statement saying I should undergo thorough psychological evaluation. It suddenly dawned on me, is this now who I'll always be known as, this complete psychopath? Cole runs the Food for Louis channel, and it's just a pathetic attention-grabbing stunt. His sick and twisted abuse of animals, which he films and then puts onto YouTube, is, is outrageous. Hey, I'm Louis Cole. I've been vlogging my life and adventures on YouTube for the last six years on my channel, Fun for Louis. What a lot of people don't know is that before this, I was making completely different content on my channel, Food for Louis. Food for Louis. Food for Louis. Food for Louis. Uh, Food for Louis is a channel on YouTube where Louis, this guy, basically eats a bunch of stuff. He's become a YouTube sensation by eating live animals. Oh, that's why there's blood coming out of his <coughs> mouth. It's all over his mouth. Just, why would you do it? It's disgusting. That bloke wants his head red. He's mad. I used to have a bit of a reputation for eating weird things. My friends found it hilarious. And I guess it was my, I kind of like my party trick. Uh, we decided to upload some of these little videos onto YouTube. The videos were centered around me challenging myself to eat things that are considered disgusting or repulsive in Western culture. At this point in my life, I'd done a lot of traveling, so I'd like eaten weird things in other countries. So in Thailand, I'd eaten scorpions, um, live honey ants in Australia, live locusts in Zambia. Um, I'd even um, hunted crocodiles in the Amazon. Then I'd had chickens killed in front of me to eat in Africa. Then I'd even killed a goat in a Kenyan tribal ceremonial meal. So I was quite used to seeing people eating completely different things from around the world, but knew that a lot of people online weren't used to that. I guess I'd realise as well that a lot of people are quite detached from what they eat. And as meat eaters, we buy something just packaged in the supermarket, but we don't really connect that with an animal dying or being slaughtered or suffering in any way. We just receive the final product and kind of blank what happens behind the scenes. But I guess with my channel, I was really facing the reality of what it is to eat animals. So I was literally, some of my videos, eating live animals. He is going to eat a live tarantula. A live tarantula. A live tarantula. People were up in arms, outraged that I'd eat a live animal. Louis, is it nice. uh, cruel to animals? Are you are you torturing them in any way? I was trying to challenge uh, what we see as acceptable, and I think it became interesting to me that there's a lot of uh, people that will eat animal products, meat out there that they don't connect that with with the reality of what that means. A lot of people got really upset and not just vegetarians, but meat eaters. And I found it really hypocritical that they couldn't make the connection between how the animals they were eating were suffering much more than the animals that I was eating on camera. How do you gauge the ethics of eating animals and what are the deciding factors? Is it how cute they are, whether they can be kept as pets, um, how long they suffer for when they die, the conditions that they're kept in when they're alive? I don't really know. Honestly, these are questions I was asking myself at the time. Most people that eat meat would eat lamb but lambs are like some of the cutest animals and I honestly think people would struggle to kill a lamb themselves if they had to. But they're quite happy to let somebody else kill that lamb. Just because you aren't watching or thinking about the animal dying doesn't make it any better. People would go into like a, a supermarket in a store and, and happily buy packaged meat that would never kill an animal. And that's what I had an issue with in a way. I was like, I believe that if you eat meat you should be able to kill an animal. You know, some of the videos, there's animals I'm eating. I try and kill them as quickly as possible, decapitating them with my teeth. You know, I don't see the difference between that and cutting the head off an animal. So about a year into making these videos, the RSPCA showed up at my house. I don't know how they got my address, but they basically threatened to arrest me and were pressing for criminal charges for me eating a goldfish in one of my videos. Now, apparently this was illegal. Uh, none of the other videos I'd made were. Uh, but they opened up a file and they had 
all of these screenshots with, with notes they'd taken. I'm gonna be eating my pet goldfish. <laughs> Louis posted the video, and as the hits started totting up, the backlash started flowing in. Then one day I got a phone call and my friend said, Louis, the, the RSPCA have shown up at our house. And I was like, no, they haven't, don't be stupid. And they're like, no, they're, they're in uniform, they've got radios, like, this is the real deal. The RSPCA left Louis a warning letter, letting him know they weren't impressed. So Louis read the letter carefully, taking in every single word, and then posted it online. Soon, Louis' story was appearing in papers across the country. I found this really confusing that you can go fishing in the UK, you can hook a fish through the mouth, pull it out of the water, stab it in the head, take it home and eat it. But can you hook it through the mouth, pull it out of the water, bite its head off, take it home and eat it? Like, is that legal? Um, I didn't really see the difference between what I'd done. And again, it was causing minimal suffering. I literally killed it within seconds. So in the build up to going to court, I was researching what the fines were, what they were trying to prosecute me for. And it was actually pretty serious. There was, I think, a maximum of a £20,000 fine and up to six months in prison for what I had supposedly done. And um, yeah, I was, I was worried. I was, uh, although I'm, I'm an optimist, I definitely thought, flip, and am I gonna end up in prison for something this small? I got taken to court. I had to explain myself in front of the judge. And luckily I got let off with a warning. I had to make a public apology, but I just found it ridiculous, especially as a lot of people were comparing me to a kind of Bear Grylls on YouTube and he's got TV shows airing on UK television where he literally takes a salmon out of the river and eats it live. You can eat these things straight out of the river like that. And that is like the freshest Alaskan salmon you can possibly have. Let's be honest, no one's watching his content for survival tips it's pure entertainment and he's making millions from it so literally i don't see any difference and also shows like fear factor and i'm a celebrity get me out of here these all had similar kind of content so people saw me as a complete freak and a lot of my close friends and people i looked up to were asking whether i was okay what was going on and then PETA, the people for ethical treatment of animals made a public statement saying i should undergo thorough psychological evaluation followed by mandatory counselling. They even compared me to famous serial killers and said anyone who is capable of disregard for another living being shows very worrying psychology that should concern us all. So then when the goldfish incident happened, I was all over the national papers, literally making headlines, and I really got attacked. I was crucified in the press. He is basically making headlines for eating very strange things. I would have thought that, particularly those who are, you know, fighting for animal rights, that they would have an issue with this. Animal rights activists started attacking my channel. My videos started getting taken down. And then temporarily, YouTube actually deleted my entire channel. I guess this really shook me up and I was thinking like, what is going on? Uh, is this really a cause that I'm trying to fight for and I'm trying to, um, I guess, fight against this backlash? And I realised this just started as a bit of fun and uh, me pushing the limits and the boundaries of, of what it really meant to eat meat and eat strange things and challenge society. But this wasn't something that meant a lot to me and it wasn't really who I wanted to be. So as this was all escalating in the press, it suddenly dawned on me, is this now who I'll always be known as, this complete psychopath that eats animals online? Have I kind of ruined my life? Will I always be branded as this freak? I think after that kind of realization, I decided it's time for a change. So I guess at this point, I had an opportunity to rebrand myself. I was in the public eye and had a platform and I guess I wanted to use that to do something positive and I was trying to think, okay, what kind of videos would I like to make? So one of my friends suggested, why don't you document your life every day and make daily vlogs? And I'd never considered this before, but thought I'd give it a go. And yeah, that was when my channel Fun for Louis was born. I've always had a passion for travel and adventure. And before long, this became the new focus of my videos online. And with a bit of help from my YouTube friends, Fun for Louis eventually overtook Food for Louis. And I now have over 300 million views 
on my Fun Fluey channel. So over the following six years, I've been traveling the world, broadening my understanding of different cultures, perspectives, I guess challenging a lot of elements of how I've grown up and what I've been taught to think. But amongst that, I'd never really challenged the belief that we're meant to eat meat. I just always believed we were just meant to eat meat. That was a part of my education. That was all about to change though. And these are some of the pivotal moments that really made me think and really started me on this journey of, I guess, questioning that. So firstly, a few years ago, I met a guy in Australia who was growing all of his own vegetables. He had this beautiful plot of land and he'd actually healed himself from cancer just by eating plants. Now at the time I had a really unhealthy diet and it really made me think, should I start looking after my health more and looking into the best things I can do for my body? Later that year, I was visiting Italy and I was out in the mountains, we were going for a walk and I came across these donkeys that were malnourished and clearly weren't being looked after. And I felt this incredible compassion for them and also this helplessness, like I don't really know how to help, but I really wanna help. It's upsetting when you see animals, or people actually, that aren't being looked after. And you feel a bit helpless because you don't really have any power to change anything. Then literally moments later, we were sitting down for lunch and I was eating this platter of meat with no care or concern about those animals, like how they died and how they'd been treated when they were alive. I was just eating the meat completely oblivious. Oh. Uh, having a little snack. Is, is this lunch? Is this lunch or is this an enjoyment? And someone in my comments on my video challenged me and they said it's really strange to them that I don't make that connection. And actually when I was making this video I found an online video from the guy who commented talking about the whole situation. Which is a huge platter of thin slices of meat, of dead animal flesh, of animals that were probably treated far worse than these donkeys who are out in this Italian pasture. But something that I've observed is that he eats a lot of meat. Talking about sustainability rainforest, that fucking Kit Kat, which contains dairy, which is the number one cause of rainforest destruction, is dairy and beef. So you're holding a little Kit Kat and you say, I'm into sustainability. No, not Louis. You're a liar. If I'm talking to Louie, there's so many things that you can do, like going just meatless Mondays, not even a big deal. You know, saying I'm gonna eat vegan for breakfast maybe every day and then not vegan for the rest of the day or go vegetarian. There are little steps that you can make if you would just, you know, be more in line with your moral values, bro, and just say like, you know what? I'm gonna eat a little less meat because I like animals and start becoming aware of this transition. So along with a few of my other friends who had made this transition into a plant-based diet and going vegan and challenging me and my lifestyle, I really started thinking about it. For me, the turning point was watching a documentary called Cowspiracy, which basically outlined without any dispute that the biggest and most harmful cause of global warming and destruction to the planet is the meat and dairy industry. And then the single most important thing I could do to live in harmony with this world is to switch to a plant-based diet. The human population drinks 5.2 billion gallons of water every day, needs 21 billion pounds of food, but just the world's 1.5 billion cows alone drink 45 billion gallons of water every day and eat 135 billion pounds of food. We're growing enough food right now in, in the world to feed between 12 and 15 billion people. We only have 7 billion people. Worldwide, 50% of the grain and legumes that we're growing we're feeding to animals. We have roughly a billion people starving every single day. Tonight and watching that documentary has really made me question everything. Like it's, this is kind of like a pivotal, important moment in my life. So literally overnight, I made the decision to cut out meat and dairy completely. I didn't know how long I was gonna do it for, but I really was excited about the challenge. It was kind of scary. I really didn't know what to do. I was doing a bunch of research online, but honestly, I've never looked back. I felt full of energy and it's just been this whole new chapter to my life and it's massively impacted me, not just physically, but almost spiritually, it feels like I'm a completely different person. So my new mission, my new journey is to explore this culinary adventure of going plant-based 
and taking you guys along as I learn about cooking, like the very basics of how to cook and learn how delicious a plant-based diet could be, collaborating with other people, learning about plant-based foods from other cultures as I'm traveling and just taking you guys along for the ride as I realign this channel with where I am now in life. Welcome back to Food for Louis. So if you're interested in joining along this new journey with me, make sure you subscribe to this channel, click the notification bell, and comment below the suggestions of the kind of videos you wanna see, the meals you wanna learn how to cook, and the people you want me to collaborate with. And I'll see you next week with the first episode of Food for Louis.